name's Lydia of Lydia's Homestead and this is my first YouTube video and it happens to be vlogmas. I'm brand new to this but I thought I would get on here and record what I'm doing during December. I have a few things planned and first of all a thing I'm very excited about is we are doing a habitation, habitation throw knit along. And today we can start, we can open that first package for Advent. We can cast on and start knitting up. And I'm so excited. I've been waiting for months to do this, uh, this throw. Now, if you're not familiar with it, it is the habitation throw by Helen Stewart. And this is what it looks like. You can find it on Ravelry if you have not purchased the pattern yet. You can purchase it and you can join us at any time. Um, and since today's the first, you just have to cast on today, today or after today. Um, some details about it is you can use your advent you bought if you bought one i did not personally buy a whole advent but i was so generously sent uh an advent from last year's 2020 um what? mcmullins no this is 2021 last year was 2020 a mcmullins um advent from last year which is colorways of different classics um and i packaged them all up in little brown packages uh you probably saw at the intro to the video this is my little boy he is going to be here <laughs> he's not going to be in the frame though because um for privacy reasons but um yeah you ever say once in a while you'll see his hand or something but he's here with me and we're recording this um but here's my advent i wanted to open it um but a couple of things about the knit along is i'm lydia's homestead on instagram ravelry facebook um and hashtag Habitation Throw K-A-L, which is Habitation Throw Knit Along. And I just wanted to have a really laid back knit along to knit with my friends and um, knit this beautiful blanket that I've been wanting to knit for a few months now. I started knitting last December after crocheting for years and I was not able to participate in all the fun December things. <laughs> all right. It's not December. Yeah, December. Last year, because I, he's drinking hot chocolate. He's, he's enjoying it a lot. <laughs> because I just started knitting. Um, so this year I get to do Advent. I'm so excited. Okay. Um, so every day I'm going to open an Advent up. Uh, a package up and see my colorway. Today's I'm going to cast on and every every day I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to use the whole um, mini or not because I have 10 to 20 gram minis. And uh, you can do 10 grams if you want. Thank you. Okay, all done with that. Thank you. This is real life type podcast so welcome <laughs> okay back to the knit along um if you purchase the pattern through curious handmade you who is helen stewart you are welcome to join in at any time there is a prize by mcmullen and i also have on ravelry a chatter group open for us to chatter share our um, mini skeins that we open up, whether it be scrap mini skeins, 
um, 10 gram mini skeins, 20 gram, however you want to do your blanket. It's super laid back, however you would like to do it. Um, the habitation throw. Oh, thank you. Hello. Yeah, story of Christmas. Very nice. I am counting down to Christmas with my throw. Um, I know some other people are counting down the whole December to January. Um, that is up to you. You don't have to count down to Christmas. You can do it how you want to do it. Um, but the reason I chose the habitation throw is, and you can see this on her Ravelry pattern page, but I just want to read a little snippet for you. <clears throat> Habitation, the act or fact of living somewhere, is a pleasantly old-fashioned, practical kind of word. Habitation can be a verb, and there's an important truth in that. Quite often, home is something we do. A building or place only becomes a home when we live there, when we fill it with memories, emotions, and hopes. Even if we live in one place our whole lives, with legions of ancestors behind us, a home is never a static thing. We feather our nests with soft, cozy things and decorate them with reminders of important moments in our lives. Making a home, making ourselves a home, is an ongoing, fluid, ever-shifting act. And I chose this habitation throw. It's just a period in my life where um, we're a military family. My husband is Air Force and we move every few years and we just moved <clears throat> beginning of October and we're currently have a temporary living position um, where we are staying with someone else and but it's still home even if it's not our house yet it's still our home and wherever you live whatever memories you make that is personal for you and how you go through life and what's cozy for you. So I just wanted to knit up and just have the memory of this stage in my life um, and the joy uh, this time of year is bringing. Uh, so whatever stage of life you are in, you are welcome to bring those to your knitting as well. Now, now that I've said all that and I have my Merry Christmas tree on, let's open this advent. So, first day, and it is the colorway Love and Friendship. So it's from the classic cover, Love and Friendship by Jane Austen. I am gonna open it here. Yeah. Which one is it? Oh, pink! Wow, pink! That is so pretty. Ah, I'm gonna go ahead and cast this on and get started on the habitation throw. Um, so go ahead and knit this up and learn how to do an I cord because I think that's what we start with when I was looking over the pattern. So come with me and figure that out. And then I do have a small snippet I already recorded before this and it's not really small, it's of <laughs> me attempting to dye yarn for the first time. So, um, enjoy that. Oh, thank you. What? Well, thank you. Oh, a present for me. <laughs> Another present for me. Oh. Did, you, did you want to show off your sewing skills too? Yeah. <laughs> We, we do all kinds of crafts too. So he got to use his fine motor skills and sew it. Um, so 
enjoy casting on. I can't wait to see your first colorways and enjoy. <laughs> Present for you. Thank you. Enjoy knitting this with you. I've never dyed yarn before, but I've been watching some YouTube tutorials and thought I would give it a try. I am going to be dyeing with pomegranate today. So I peeled two pomegranates. This is from one. And I'm going to go ahead and make these into smaller pieces. I'm going to be using a mesh bag, so I'm just going to go ahead and rip these up and put them in my bag because so I don't have to strain them later. I don't want the pieces to get into my yarn. So using mesh bag will help. by Cabin Boy Knits on YouTube. I really enjoy watching his videos and learning about natural dyeing. He's up in Canada and he natural dyes with snow or just regular water. Um, there's no snow outside because I'm in Virginia Beach and it's November. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill up my big pot with regular old city water. And then I will put this in my pot and I'm going to get it simmering and I'm going to simmer it for two hours and then we will see where we're, we are at after two hours. What color do you think will come from this pomegranate? Hmm. All right, there's one way to find out. Let's get this pot filled. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. I've been waiting to do it. I have my bare yarn ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and tie this up so that they don't come out. Get this pot filled up and see you in a couple hours. couple hours my pomegranates have been simmering for two hours I'm going to let them simmer a little bit longer I want the water to kind of take the color a little bit longer but I'm going to go ahead and get my yarn ready so let's open this up and grab the skeins that we are going to use I have my partner here says hello and he has his hot chocolate we have our hot chocolate where's your hot chocolate partner 
There's hot chocolate. And I have my coffee. And we are getting this day going, aren't we, partner? <laughs> yes, okay, get... yeah, yeah, yes, yes, we yes, are. Okay, let's get this opened up. I've been working with this particular yarn it's from Briggs and Little which is a small mill in Canada but I purchased it from the US side um, that distributes it and I'm going to do I think I'm going to do three skeins today I'm not sure if I should do three or four since I did two pomegranates but I would like to make the, is it humble shawl? The one with the little bees at the bottom around the edge. I love that. And I would really love it in the color that I dyed from pomegranates. Oh, and this yarn, uh, the wool is from sheep in, from the north, east side of the United States and then it's milled at the small mill the Briggs and Little and then check that out there so I'm very excited to dye this yarn it's of course my first time dyeing but it's my first time working with this yarn and this is the DK weight they're they're regal it's 100% wool and it feels it feels great. I'm, I'm really excited to dye this. I'm going to go ahead and put this in water, get it soaking while I finish getting my dye bath ready. Um, what we want to do is soak this in water. So what that does, it, it opens up the protein fibers and allows it to take the dye better. So when you get your yarn nice and wet, it is able to take the dye, the color better from your dye. So I'm going to get this yarn prepared and we'll see where we are after that and have a little bit more coffee in the process. <laughs> Went ahead and cut the tags off. And I just want to say that this is minimally processed. So I have found a couple pieces of hay or straw in, in the yarn. And that's so exciting because I really like minimally processed uh, yarn. Like you can see here. And this is their natural color. They have a few different ones. They had white which is um, more processed and washed, which is also more processed. So I got the mi minimally processed yarn and that's super exciting to know that this came right from um, sheep from Maine, Vermont, and I'm now getting to use it. So I went ahead and cut the tags off and you can see my pot it's still simmering back there and I have them all tied make sure all the yarns go in the right direction and I'm going ahead and just putting it right into some water which is warm you want it warm I'm going ahead and put that in there and get that soaking and I love watching this. Ready? Here it goes. <laughs> Ready to watch this one? One more. Yeah. Whoa. 
dog. <laughs> he loves watching them untwist. All right, and these are going right into our warm water. We do not want to shock the wool because this can felt. You do not want it in hot water, just a little bit warmer than room temperature water. Um, and this prepares it for the dye bath. Got it loosely. You can see it, you can see it close up. I am excited about this and hoping it turns out really well and um, just enjoying taking you along on this process with me uh, in case you know you ever want to try it or maybe you have tried it and you're a pro um, please don't judge too hard <laughs> but we all have to start somewhere and learn somewhere so um, yeah getting it all soaked in the water all right this is soaking i'm going to take my pot off and check the color actually i'll just take you over there with me let's go check it out me i can see the color check out the color it's getting dark what do you think <laughs> you <see> good? <laughs> Yeah, that is going to be really pretty. Okay, don't get close. It's hot. What? Yeah. I'm um, using a stainless steel pot and, <laughs> and stainless steel. Um, just so the color does not react with the pot. Because if you, know, if you use the iron pot, you're going to get a totally different color. So I think that's ready to come off. <laughs> and we will get that cooled down so we do not shock our yarn. I have my dye bath here. It simmered for two and a half hours and it's been cooling down so I can you know, stick my fingers in it and it's not too hot. You don't want it to be hot, it'll shock your wool. And I'm nervous about shocking my wool. I do not want it to felt at all. So I made sure it cooled down. It's been over three hours since I took it off the heat and I'm ready to put my yarn in. So my partner's here, he's gonna watch me. You have to stand over here, okay? Yep, hello. <laughs> okay, so nice soaked yarn. Oh, make sure. I don't want my yarn to get all tangled here. Okay, nice wet. You don't wanna wring your yarn out. That will also felt it. So it's, it's warm. So I think it'll be just, just fine here. What do you think? Look at this. Oh, I hope it comes out really nicely. Okay, we'll set that in there. He knows that. Yep, another, another. Hooray, hooray. Oh, what's it feel like? Slime. Slime? That does not feel like slime. Ew. It smells a little bit like sheep, doesn't it? Come back up a little bit. Thank you. Get that going in there. And I did decide to do four skeins. Hoping that, that one. Yeah. Wow. Hoping that'll be all right. Up, please. <laughs> what an audience. Are you applauding my yarn dyeing skills? Oh, thank you. I do need that because I do need to get out the pomegranate mesh bag, but wait until I get the rest of this yarn in here, okay? Oh, the bottom is really soaking. 
squeeze it lightly, but I do not want it to back me. Okay. Thank you. Good job. Alright. Let's pull out my mesh bag here. And if you take a look at it, look. Look at that. Most of the color came out of that pomegranate, didn't it? Very much now. All right. I'm going to let that soak for at least an hour. Um, I think I'm going to turn on the pot to warm. Oh, thank you. I don't want to get stuck with that, okay? I'm going to turn my pot on warm to keep the water warm and so see how this turns out and hoping my wool takes the dye and there they all are all four skeins all sitting there fully submerged in water so 